Hello? This is one mana left. And I've finally arrived at Mana Forged Arrows. I made a video before the league started that this would be the strongest endgame build in the game. And that is very much true. Uh, in terms of just raw number output, it's just head and shoulders ahead of everything. It does, I would say, the most damage in the game. Assuming you get a little bit of ramp. And it's one of the tankiest builds in the game. Um, it'll probably be the top Dell build. Steve's playing it right now, and he's smoking everyone. Unless Rudy decides to join the competition or something else, we'll see. But, uh, yeah. I've got the build together now. In that pre-season video, I think I said I would do an Adorn setup with about 20k, 20k. For about two to 300 Divines. And I'm pretty much exactly there. There's a couple things different. Like, I don't have the 4 large setup in yet, but... I got a 130 Adorned. I've got some really good magic jewels that I've been kind of prioritizing crafting. Uh, I do not have Flesh Flame. And I do not have Mage Blood. Uh, but don't don't let that fool you. Just because it's a no Mage Blood, no Flesh Flame, doesn't mean it's like super budget. This is still like two to 300 Div. And that number's probably going to increase if more people start playing it. Just, you know, with normal League inflation, whatever. But, um, yeah, I'm about that 20k, 20k number. Um, let's just start with some demo here. Some demos while I talk about it. We've got an Uber Exarch. If you're not familiar with how the build works, uh, there's some ramp to it. This kind of depends on your attack speed and a couple other factors we'll get to. And, like, pretty much how geared you are. But I've kind of got the bare minimum where, you know, I've got, I've got enough ramp, but not as much as I could. So, it's going to take a couple seconds here before I start doing damage, then he's going to really pop off. There we go. So, that's an Uber Exarch. Um, sometimes you get screwed on the timing there, and he immediately ball phases. But pretty much, if you like, with my current gear level, if I get it so he does any attack whatsoever, it's enough time to kill him. But... There's, there's high DPS builds that can do that. But it, amongst those builds, this is fairly low budget. Obviously, it's still an expensive build. But for 20k ES builds that can do that, this is this is pretty there. So uh, let's look at Delve here. Delve's kind of nice right now because Curiosities are 14 Divines. It's a 40% drop. So I found, found myself a nice Ahua Talti City here. Uh, it's time for the good old-fashioned... Max HP Delve Boss demo. Uh, Delve Boss is maxed out at HP at around 950. I'm not there yet. It's pretty early in the league. But I got one here in this Ahuatalti city that has the 61% more life mod, along with a bunch of other mods. I could do these white ones and beat them very easily. But uh, instead, I'm going to do a 10 mod one that has LMP that's very likely going to kill me because the projectiles he shoots shotgun you. So, uh, let's see me splat to this one, because I want to do the hard one with max HP. So, this will kind of show that even in this budget, I've got enough ramp all, or I've got enough damage slash ramp, whatever you can call it, call it already, for um, max HP. If you, if you can get to that point, technically you can kill anything. So, this is about 800 depth, 770, whatever. And it's a pretty modded city. It's a 10 mod city. So it's it's going to be not that challenging just because it's only like 800. But it's still, if I get shotgun by LMP, I could die here. And he, he will have the full 2 billion health. So whether it's Nahuatalti here or at 6,000, this has the same HP. This is, the, this is the highest it goes. We'll talk more about this glove swap I'm doing later. But let's see if I can kill him without getting shotgunned at max HP. It's going to take the full, like, seven seconds, whatever. No, I didn't quite get the instant kill. No, I died. Shit. There you go. See? Uh, when he does the projectile attack, he'll instant kill me. Uh, it's He's got, like, turbo and onslaught and all that, so it's it's just auto death. The on the The onslaught makes it triple damage. I'll do the I'll do this one just for the sake of the demo, just for so I don't sit here and feed. I thought I'd give that one a try, but yeah, he he does like probably half a million damage every volley. 
So he'll he'll just kill you. Uh, the way you beat that is you have a mage blood. That's it. <laughs> I, I like I know that's a stupid explanation, but um, on LM you can't beat LMP Ahwatalties unless you can live like half a million damage per volley or have a mage blood because uh, they spread but still shotgun you. So unless you have like 300 move speed, you can't dodge them. You have to tank them all. And uh, tanking them all is pretty challenge. What? What is? There is. This is a modded city, Jesus. But uh, yeah, tanking them all is very challenging unless you have like some infinite recoup thing. But, all right, we 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 tried the harder guy. Let's let's do the easy guy. All right, this guy should be a little easier. There we go. It's worth noting that this one does not have max HP. I'm cheating. He's 772, so he's got about 1.4 billion. He's about 70% of the way to max HP. But with how the ramp works, it should be similar kill time. It's just that other one will auto-kill me with LMP shotgun. Because I don't have Mage Blood yet. Uh, that's probably my next upgrade right now is Mage Blood. Just because uh, we'll talk... I'll, actually, I'll talk about that now. Well, going into this. To get this build to be fast, since it doesn't have, like, the movement of, like, cast from channeling lightning warp, it kind of needs that mage blood speed to feel as good as, like, Mjolnir, for example. I'll, I'll do a little more demo of that in a second, but let's let's see if I can get, like, oh. Hang on. Alright, now we'll kill him fast. Hey! Okay, well, he just knocked my cloak off. Alright, there's a curiosity. So these are 14 div. I'll turn that into a bad adorn later. But that that's a 1.4 billion HP uh, delve boss. The damage is going to get a lot higher. I'm, I'm in the infant stages still. You know, I, I've got crit multi on this quiver. Which is getting multiplied by Widow Hail. To give me like 130 multi. And it's just not doing anything right now because I'm Ellie Overload. So I like crafted that in prep for crit jewels, but I don't have them yet. So I'm missing like three times damage, and then I don't have mage blood, so I don't have like crazy speed. So Th this is a, a point in the build where it's very very powerful, but it doesn't have speed because no mage blood, and it doesn't have insane damage because no crit jewels. Um, so if I had both of those things, I would have just gone to that very first one blowing him up instantly and if he did fire the projectiles i just move fast enough to dodge him but uh yeah as far as the speed goes though i would say if you are mapping comfortably on like a mjolnir setup right now and you have cast wind channeling lightning warp you are probably going to be farming most content faster still as mjolnir if you're pre-mage blood because Mjolnir, Caswin Channeling, Lightning Warp moves and teleports around so fast that it's kind of good speed independent of Mage Blood. And then when you add Mage Blood to that, it doesn't really get any faster because you're just teleporting everywhere. And and as long as you have enough move speed to make the teleports instant and not multi queue, then you pretty much move the same speed with Mage Blood. Whereas this build just has to run everywhere. So once I and it runs silver and quicksilver. So once you get Mage Blood with this build, it gets it goes from being absolute dumpster move speed to like 350 move speed, and suddenly it feels super fast. Um, let me do a tier 17 map demo here, but uh, I'm gonna talk about another option here. So in that in that delve boss there, I did a weapon swap to my Red Blade banner here for max power battle mages cry. A lot of people don't like doing that, and I agree, I don't like doing that as well. If you want to get the absolute max power out of the build, that's how you do it. But there's uh, there's another way to play the build that's a, it's, it's weaker, but when you have a build that does insano damage, weaker is still fine usually. And that's the, the no swap setup. So I've been, I've been dealt, this is like my default setup right now. Like I'm at 770 and I've just been delving with this setup. The no swap setup is the typical mana forge setup has a four link mana forged arrow here to give you extra leech and frenzy charges. 
and then this will trigger every two shots to give you more ramp as well. Instead, I have a swap pair of gloves that will use these for like a single target delve boss. Where I use the new call to arms with Battle Mage's Cry and increased duration. And by activating this, uh, it will just, you know, spam Battle Mage's Cry on cooldown. I won't necessarily be at full stacks all the time. If I'm just sitting here in hide, I'm getting no stacks. If I was doing the four large setup and I took the mastery, I could take the minimum 10 power and then I'm guaranteed at least one third power. But when I'm actually surrounded by monsters, I'm pretty much getting enough power to kill them. It's maybe full power. You get 10 just being on a boss. So ha or uh, a rare monster. No, you get 20 on a boss and 10 on a rare monster. So as long as there's monsters around you, you should have enough stacks to just pretty much insta-kill stuff. So I've been delving at like 800 with this setup. But yeah, it's just automated battle mages cry. And then I use blood rage to keep my frenzy charges since I don't have frenzy here. Uh, I'll show you I'll show you this tier 17 map with this setup. So I've got a giga juiced um, fortress here. It's double crit, 100 fire, boss damage, boss turbo, boss possessed, maven witness. And just for some extra health, I have this to give him 50% more life. So we'll try to make a really juiced T17 boss and see how this feels. But I'll show off this setup because this will be the, uh, the no swap. So I, w I won't be swapping red blade. I'll just be playing like a normal build here. And hopefully I don't splat to something unforeseen. T17s are a little weird. I I don't know if I don't know if it's just like Revenant DD that's been punishing me, but I'll have occasional deaths in them that just don't make sense. Like I can run five and never dip below ninety percent, and I'll just randomly die. And I'm pretty sure it's Revenant DD every time. But or sometimes <laughs> exploding barrels. There, there, it's just really inconsistent damage. Like, I'll, I'll most of the time take absolutely zero damage. And then I'll sometimes just get, like, pretty much one shot. And it's just, there's a variety of different mechanics that, like, just do super hard spike damage. Like DD and barrels. Or just, like, the double crit mod, whatever. Oh, shit. Okay. This is going to be another one of those examples where I, I, I line up a tier 17. Oh, there we go. I'll swap here. Alright, we got like a giga modded boss. Is he not? Do I, what's going on here? Oh, there he goes. Why is he not taking damage? Okay, that was weird. Does he get a damage reduction? I don't know. Oh, I thought I wasn't going to get fragments. That takes so long for loot to drop. Alright, well that's tier 17 map with the no swap setup. I swapped gloves for the boss just because I wanted some single target. But the, the no swap setup can play pretty fine in Delve. Like, the power level's there. I'm pretty sure I can play no swap to 6k. I'm actually, I'm actually really confident I can play no swap to 6k. Um, it's, I, I've, I've hardly been able to tell the difference and it would only get better if I get the 10 minimum power node. Uh, so I might just play no swap to 6k. It, it's comfy. I, like, obviously it's weaker than the red blade swap, but it's comfy. So I'll, I'll maybe switch back and forth between what I feel like playing. But, uh, yeah, the last thing I'm going to talk about, well, two things, they're kind of related though, is the main challenge for people who are switching the build and that's spend so this this could honestly deserve a whole video for itself but i think it really needs to be talked about because there's people who try out the build and the first thing that goes wrong is they don't have the spend mana forge arrows is possibly the most complicated build in the game right now i'm not 100 percent sure of that but i'm like 95 percent sure of that um the reason, there's a number of reasons, but you need to get your spend right, and that's a tricky thing to do. So, how it works is you need to be able to get to a positive feedback loop where you're gaining Indigon stacks faster than they're dropping off. And to do that, there's a bare minimum amount of mana spent per second based on, like, no stacks to have, like, a runaway feedback loop. And to get those minimums is a little tricky. So I'll go through some of the tools to get that and how I'm getting that. 
And right now, my current setup is, like, not... If I had, like, a Mage Blood giving me an extra 40% attack speed from, like, the Silver Flask with attack speed, it'd, it'd be much smoother. But, um... There's a couple tools you can have to get this cost higher. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're probably going to want to have a 60% Indigon. It's, it's really unlikely you'll be able to pull it off on a 50, even like a 55. You want to have upper 50s to a 60 on the Indigon. This is going to help your ramp. Uh, the next thing is you want to have some good gem multipliers on your spender. So Rainy Bear's Saturation is kind of the, the, the best spender. I think for, like, endgame, you can get a lightning arrow setup that feels really good for mapping, that has, like, Awaken GMP, Awaken Fork, Awaken Chain, Return Proj, some combination of two or three of those that can pretty much just blow up two screens in one shot. That's how I played in Tota for mapping, and I'm probably going to get to that point uh, this league. We'll see. Um, but the gem multipliers that go with this, as well as the attack speed of this skill need to get a high enough combination of spend to ramp. So this is where it gets a little complicated. Um, probably if you're watching this right now, uh, you're in the future, and you were just linked a timestamp in my chat that took you to this exact timestamp in this video. Hello, Twitch chat person. You've now arrived. And I'm going to explain to you how to calculate shot ratios. So... Every X amount of shots, you're going to trigger your main nuke. And your main nuke is Storm Rain of the Conduit. You'll see right now I'm using a level 18. There's a reason for that. Um, and it's not always correct to use 18. Sometimes it's correct to use 20 or 21. They're kind of the same. just depends on what you can afford, whatever. But well, let's break it down. The Mana Forge Arrow Support Gem has a multiplier of 200%. And then it triggers after you spend three times the cost of the skill on your spender. So this is a very predictable pattern. It doesn't like alternate. It doesn't actually uh, depend on Indigon stacks. It's always the exact same. I used to think it bounced around depend on ri rising or falling Indigon stacks. It actually happens 100% independent of Indigon stacks because it operates on a ratio of the two. So it calculates on how much percent of this did you spend. And since they're both influenced equally by Indigon stacks, the same, if it's 20%, you always get 20% credit. So right now my shot ratio is 5 to 1. So watch this. I'm going to shoot 1, 2, 3, 4. The next shot is going to trigger a Storm Rain. Watch. There it is. Every fifth shot, 2, 3, 4. Every fifth shot will trigger a Storm Rain, guaranteed. There it is. No matter what, the fifth shot will always trigger a storm rain. And that's deliberate, because I've done a little bit of calculation to get it this way. My ratio is 5 to 1, which is really good for ramp and really good for quality of life. I would say you probably want to have a 6 to 1 ratio at least. You don't need 5 to 1. 6 to 1 is what I was playing with before, and you can get by on that. Uh, 7 to 1 is probably a little bad. There's people playing with 7 to 1, and it's not good. So how you calculate this is a little complicated, but... Because of number rounding and the fact that your Indigon stacks are constantly moving, do not, I repeat, do not do the math on this cost and this cost. Do not. I could, and it's going to work out nice, because this is costing 30, so I need to spend three times that much, so it's going to be 90. And this costs 18, so I should have a shot ratio of 5. Perfect, right? Not necessarily, because you could have different rounding where this actually costs 18.2 and this costs 31 or like 18.4, whatever. Like, you get the point. Where this rounds to 18, but this is 31. So, for the sake of this, it would operate at 6 to 1 in my hideout. But I'd still have a 5 to 1 shot ratio because once I actually start gaining Indigon stacks and that one mana rounding becomes irrelevant, then I will be able to 5 to 1 ratio and it's fine. So the easiest way to calculate this, maybe I'll try to make some calculator for this to make it easier, is to take the base cost of your spender. So in this case, a rain of arrows saturation, if it's 19 or higher, obviously I, if I had a 20 or 21, it'd be even better. 
It doesn't gain another cost break point until like 26. My base cost is 11. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take it by times all your gem multipliers. So I have conch effect, so 11 times 1.4. I have enhance, 1.2. I have weapon Ellie, 1.3. Man, Leech doesn't have a multiplier. Trinity, that we'll get to this later, is 1.4. And then I also have the Bow Corrupt as Momentum, which is 1.1. So mine is right at about 37. So we'll remember this number. Then I'm going to do the same thing on Storm Rain of the Conduit. So remember when I said I was using an 18 here? That's because an 18 costs 10. And both a 19, 20, 21, 22... They all cost 11, so 10% more cost. So if you're going to go past 18, you might as well go all the way to 21. But um, the, 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 the choice you have to make here between 21 and 18 is basically, do I get a one better shot ratio by going to 18? If the answer is yes, you do. So if you're 7 to 1 with a 21 and you're 6 to 1 with an 18, take the 6 to 1. Trust me, all right? It might seem kind of equal damage, but you'll ramp harder with, with the 6 to 1. And you'll trigger more frequently, so it'll be smoother damage ramp. Um, so, we have 10 is the base cost on this. And then the Mana Forge arrow is, is 200%. And then it's 3 times to trigger, so we're already up to 60. Cog effects 1.4. Mirage Archers 1.3. Lightning Pens 1.3. And then Weapon L is 1.3. So remember the other number was 36.99696. So 4.988. So I'm under 5. So that means I have a 5 to 1 shot ratio. So this is what you want to have. But if I had a level 21 Storm Rain, that 10 base cost would have been 11. So it would actually be this times 1.1. So... If I was using a 21 Storm Rain, my shot ratio would be 5.48, which rounds up to 6. There's no inter-rounding where it sometimes triggers after 5, sometimes triggers after 6. Nope. If it's 5.01, it's 6 every time. It always rounds up. So, basically, you can tweak your support gem multipliers, and you can tweak your gem levels. And you want to be just under like a break-even point. So you don't want to be like 5.1. You want to be 4.9. You don't want to be 6.3 if you can be 5.8. You want to be just under a whole number. It'll 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 ramp smoother. It'll play smoother. Trust me. Um, so one thing I did to get 5 to 1 is I had the momentum corrupt. But the other thing I'm doing is I'm running Trinity. The main reason for Trinity is it's got a 140 multiplier. It's, it's also a really good support gem. But when I made the quiver video, I, I finished the prefixes by just re-rolling chaos with suffixes locked. And that gave me guaranteed T1 added chaos because there's only one tier of chaos. And it's like on par with the other T1 mods. So it's really nice as a finishing step for a quiver because it's basically a free T1. But I decided to spend some extra money to do reforge fire with locked suffixes. And I spent about 10 div getting this to get my added fire damage mod. And this is actually enough to proc Trinity because Arcane Cloak gives you a fat amount of flat lightning, but it's not always up. And when it's not up, the lightning range roll on this is, since lightning has a really wide roll range, just having pretty much any amount of flat fire, if like this is tier 3 or higher, it'll be enough that with the sheer number of Reign of Arrows hits that are hitting, some of the hits are going to have fire damage be higher than a low roll lightning hit. So that will proc Trinity. So you will have pretty much full uptime on Trinity. If you were watching any of those clips, you'll see my Trinity uptime is pretty much 100%. Um, so I switched the Chaos Roll to Fire here to be able to use Trinity, which is a good support, to then give me a 140 multi, which got me from 6 to 1 to 5 to 1. And that was a pretty big uh, upgrade for both ramp and just quality of life. I say I keep saying quality of life. Just remember that the longer it takes you to trigger your actual main nuke, the slower you're going to kill stuff. Like, you'll get in situations where your damage is overkill. You just need a Storm Rain. So getting the Storm Rain faster is just going to make you farm faster, kill faster. It's unbelievable quality of life to have a faster trigger on the Storm Rain. More so than damage even, really. Just because when you get good gear, especially, the damage just becomes a non-issue for things. Um, so, this is a really wonky subject. 
I know a lot of people are going to look at the whole shot ratio thing and be like, nah, I'm not, I'm not doing that. If normally I'd say, if you copy my gem links, you'll be fine. And my gem levels will be fine. But in this case, I have the momentum corrupt. So if you don't have that, that changes things. You're probably going for a six to one setup with a 21, but try to follow along the math and see if you can get a good shot ratio. Cause if you're having trouble spending, improving your shot ratio will help. The last thing I'll go over here is just a couple ways to get attack speed. So Blood Rage here is giving me a good amount of attack speed in my no swap setup. And then I have Frenzy Charges in the secondary link here. There's a couple other ways you can squeeze out some attack speed. One way is if you're doing Adorn Jewels, there's a really good implicit uh, on Abyss Jewels that's attack speed during Onslaught. So this with a 140 Adorn gives 12% attack speed during Onslaught, which is pretty much all the time. With either a charge on hit silver flask or like a mage blood. Uh, so that's just 12% attack speed on implicit. That's a big deal. But I took this jewel as, a, as uh, just because it, it rolled good stats. But there's also an abyss jewel modifier that says 8% increased crit chance if you have crit recently. Which even if you're not crit jewels, just the sheer number of hits you're putting out. You will be critting all the time. And so it'll always be up. So that 8% roll gets multiplied by Adorn. If you just had one Abyss Jewel that was this implicit and that mod, even with a 140 Adorned, it will give you 31% attack speed for one Jewel. That is such a big deal. If it, that, You could be on the wrong side of the, the ramp where you just can't ramp. And then if you just sprinkle on 31% attack speed, suddenly you'll ramp just fine. So... You could put in two of these. You could you could have two 31% attack speed jewels and just say, full send, give me 62% attack speed. And that should really solve any issues you have. So I would say if you if you just feel like you can't ramp and you need more attack speed, try to do something like this. Uh, there's a couple other things you can do to squeeze out some attack speed. Like obviously the flask, suffix, and silver flask. Um, the action speed implicit on boots is a fairly big deal because move speed which is since you don't have like lightning warp in this setup is your main movement method but it's also an attack speed more multiplier um but there's been a couple people trying to build out it's not a build for beginners it's going to take a little bit of currency put into it but try to do some of these things if your attack speed is too low to ramp try to get a higher indigon try to get a better shot ratio try to get higher multipliers i could even go further than this like i'm using enhance right now which is not the greatest multiplier if you just really really needed ramp and you you couldn't do it you could just drop this for gmp because gmp is a 150 multiplier i could get four to one with gmp so if i if i if you really just cannot get ramp just go full send and just put in like a 150 multi instead of the enhance i have here and and if, if i swap this for gmp my spend would probably be too high so You've got like five to six different things you can try. You probably don't need to do all of them. You probably need to do like two or three of them. And then you should be able to get enough ramp to kind of ramp the way I am. But I know this is a bit of a complicated subject. It's a complicated build. But once you get this part solved, it only ever gets better. The ramp only gets faster as you get more gear. By the, by the end of Total League on Victor... I was killing Uber Maven in the second phase, which you have 0.4 seconds to kill her before she goes away from full. She auto phases. She takes no damage unless you're a preset trapper. And she starts that next phase at full HP and you have 0.4 seconds to kill her to beat the balls. And I was beating the balls every time. I was full killing Uber Maven in 0.4 seconds. So once you get pretty insane gear on like the mage blood side of things you can get the ramp to be so fast it's just something you don't even think about anymore but on the under geared side of things it's it's the real struggle between the build working or not working so i if you've made it this far in the video god hope you hopefully you haven't quit exit by now and you understand this but it's a complicated build hopefully you figure it out i'll see you guys next time